is to keep my initial one here. Okay. I'm not caring for what I'm seeing here. My triangle is not really symmetrical. Fine. I can correct it a little bit if I want to. But once again, I'm sketching, so I don't want to be at this all night, and you don't want to sit and watch me do it all night. But I will refine that so that it splits these triangles a little more evenly. And that would affect the lines underneath as well, because it's supposed to be a, a flip of the same thing. But okay. All right. Um, as I'm looking at it, I'm deciding that I really don't like this tangency here. Tangency is, uh, has many meanings in design, but in this case, I'm, a couple meanings. But in this case, I mean I don't like the way it rams right into itself. So I'll back that up a little bit so that the fact that this is a separate triangle remains. And I'm going to keep it symmetrical. So I'll do the same thing over here. Okay. Now the only thing that's really missing from this is I had told you I want you to use a stone um, in this piece. Um, I am going to use I'm either an oval or a circle. I haven't decided yet. Um, I'll start with a circle. See what I think of it. It's already kind of an oval. So I'll keep taking that oval thing a little further. See what I think of it as an oval. It's okay. How about a horizontal oval? Not as much. How about a centrally located oval? Ruins the design. How about two smart two circles here? And here. Kinda crazy. Alright. How about an off-center oval or circle. Fastest way to draw circles freehand in Painter is to use a great big brush and draw the circle as a black shape. Get the circle that you want. And then come back in with the white. And clean it up. And once again, I have all kinds of ways to make this really precise and clean. But I don't want to use them. I might decide I want to do something more with the triangle. Um, but for now, I think the only thing I would do is build in a recess, like a depression that cuts down into this one that kind of sets it off and okay okay this isn't going to win an award anytime soon but for the purposes of what we're doing 
it's fine. Now I want to sketch this from the uh, front view. I'm going to need a little more room to do that, I think. So, move this piece of my template down. And commence drawing again. I know I want it that thick here. I want this one to stand out. I'm going to need a. Str anytime I see a corners class, I have to indicate that in the front. So if I see a corner here, I have to show it. If I see a corner here, I have to show it. If I see a corner here, I have to show it. This is an inside corner. I don't see. I mean, an interior. So I don't see that along this line. This whole straight line is unbroken, and so I don't have anything else to show here. I want this to overlap the one underneath, so I do have to get this corner. As I told you, there are several rights or wrongs here. There's no precise answer as far as what is the right or the wrong way to do this. I know these reach a half a millimeter, so I can kind of visualize that. And a half a millimeter isn't a great big step, but it's something. I'm going to let this kind of drop down a little bit towards its point, so that I can get a little more elevation in there, a little more interest in the piece. Uh, this is almost, I mean, it's the same on the outside edge. Now I don't actually see. You always draw what's closest to you. So I'll draw this edge first. I want this to be lower. In fact, I'm going to keep that. Pretty much at that two and a half millimeter height all the way across. This I want to climb up and above it. But I never want it to get as high as this. It can't, because if it was as high as that, there wouldn't be a line here which is kind of interesting, but not what I drew. So I need to have an elevation difference in order for that to happen. In fact, maybe to get a good clean elevation difference, I will also tilt this one slightly down towards its tip. Okay. On this side, the high one is in front. I'm not going to have the same oomph of, of elevation unless I pick everything up. And I don't really want to pick everything up, but I might have to. Okay, see, I'm, I'm figuring out as I go. Yeah, I need to. I need to pick it up. So this is going to be the same as the other side. This is the one in front this time, so you don't even see the one in back. It's completely covered. And I'm going to have to elevate this as high as the one in the front. what I originally had drawn as the taller element. And it'll be okay because of this recess, um, which I'm glad now that I put in there. This is actually a corner I would see. It would show itself as a notch. Now I can sharpen this pencil until I can go in and draw every little detail. 
I don't want to. Because if I commit myself to that, I'm going to have to do it for the whole drawing, and I don't want to do it for the whole drawing. I am going to go ahead and do the straight line, though. Along the bottom. Just so I have that. Okay? Now the last thing I need to do... Oh, the stone. We said it was going to be a cabochon form. Domed. So there we go. Okay. The last thing I'm going to do is put this ring around the finger. Now I can see this top line is the edge of this. So I can see I've gone quite a ways over. This would be this line. The cabochon is going to be like so. And I'm okay with that. So I know this comes all the way you know, close to this line right here. I know that my shank, the higher one, the higher half, is just above this level. It's at about this level at the halfway point. And then it blends into the two millimeters as it comes down. That's fine. The lower one stays at the two and a half millimeter level all the way up, which I can eyeball because that stays a consistent static thickness. Now I have a fairly rough paper here that's starting to get in my way. That for some reason doesn't want to pop up to where I can get a hold of it. No, that's not good. try this. I have another option if I want it and that is to decrease the amount of grain that feeds up here. It feeds the brush. I'm going around a circle here uh, which is a bit more of a challenge wrist wise. I don't want to go crazy. I do know I want the same thing over here pretty much in the interest of time. into position. That's fine. Okay. Sketch in the top. This top um, heart, or triangle I should say, comes in from here. It tapers down and it comes all the way over to here. Oh, 
Okay. Now it's important to note, I'm getting some distortion here. This dimension's along the finger. The dimension along the outside is much bigger. It's stretching this. So if I want to, if I don't like what I'm seeing, I can actually come down off of here, which I've actually kind of already done. But instead of letting it come off at this angle, I can pick something in between so that it visually stays more similar to what I have. discuss this more in class what I'm talking about here but I was sensing some distortion that triangle was getting really big Cabochon. See, in te technically speaking, I would draw a line straight down. So it would be here. But as it expands along the outer circumference, it takes it farther back. So you're gonna do a you're gonna do a compromise. Sketching, you're gonna do a compromise. I want to have a stone that looks about the same size as that stone. have this comes almost to the edge of this which I want to keep I want this to come in at a comfortable angle If this comes into here, this has to match it over here, which it already does. This is about right. That compromise was kept pretty consistent. Okay, going to grab that and flip it over. you don't have these techniques, this, this technology of course, you're going to be using tracing paper, which is also fine. I used it for years to trace and flip. We don't have a stone on this side. Okay. This is where this gets taken underneath this at right around the midpoint. Okay. Now, we here, we gave it a sharper slant than we did the other side to enable that to be more of a difference. We can re replicate that here. little notch. Okay. This whole thing has kind of grown because to carry this elevation all the way over here makes it want to swell way high here. Not sure I like that. I think I want to bring that down a little bit. I think 
that's more in keeping with that proportion. I don't like that tucking so hard under. I want it a little straighter. Still important to keep that crisp corner that I'm kind of losing. Do the same thing over here. shank a little bit, which I'll actually do with a new layer, just because it's easier. put in a registration mark just so when I flip this over it'll be easy to do don't like how that looks is pretty much that. Yeah. I'm going to lighten this up so that I can still tell it's there but so that it's not so blatant. And that's enough. I mean that shows me enough of what's going on with this ring that I, I understand it. It's it's one of the ways it could go. I don't hate it. don't necessarily love it. But it's fine. Uh, that will do for now. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in class.